morning, everyone. Buenos dias. Pastor Jim Simbola here. We're reading through the book of Galatians. And let me just tell you up front again, I know it's sounding boring, maybe, or redundant. But I do hope you look into going to Amazon or Bible uh, Christian Books or brooklyntabernacle.org and get a copy of a new book that just came out that I wrote called Fan the Flame. Once again, all the royalties will go to the church, so it's not a matter of uh, me trying to make a dollar. It's a matter of me trying to encourage serious Christians and pastors how to make it through the difficult times that we are living through. Church attendance at a law, all time low in the country. Th that's not faith talk, that's reality. Those are the numbers. And uh, pastors quitting at the highest rate you could imagine and others wanting to quit, and churches not growing and baptizing new converts, what's the answer? Ah, back to the Bible and what the Bible says about ministry. That's what Fan the Flame is about, how to see our churches and ministries stirred and, and, and heated up so that we can give great witness for Jesus Christ. We're reading the book of Galatians, and we're in chapter 5. And we've read verses one and two. Let me just read them again. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by, the, by a yoke of slavery. So Paul, <clears throat> in context once again, is telling the people in Galatia, southern Turkey, that uh, don't go back to Judaism when Christ has come to release us from the bondage of the laws of Judaism. You don't have to become under the law to become a Christian. Go right to Christ, but never go backwards. The law was superseded by Christ. Why would you come to Christ as he had led them to Christ? Now to go back to the law and the bondage of it? Did I do enough? Oh no, I broke a commandment. And now I'm not accepted by God. So Paul is maintaining that we're accepted by God based on nothing in our track record. Can you believe that? That's the good news of the gospel, that faith in Christ is the only acceptance that we can ever know with God. We have all sinned, come short of the glory of God, but by faith in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross and the blood he shed and his resurrection power, and his ascension to heaven, and who he is, the Son of God, soon to return. That is Christianity 101. So Paul's now going to say something really wild. Are you ready? It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then. Don't let anybody take you into bondage over what day you worship or what food you eat and, and, and trying to earn merit to get accepted by God. Mark my words. I, Paul, verse 3, tell you, verse 2, mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. That's wild. He says, now mark my words. If you go back and get circumcised like you want to get back under the law and do enough to get pleasing to God, then Christ is of no value at all. It's either all Christ or all law. Which one do you want it? It's not Christ and some law. It's not a lot of law and some Christ. That's the way a lot of us have grown up in church. Yeah, Christ, but then I got to do, 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 do all these things. Then God will say, good to go. Nothing of the law will gain acceptance with God. I mark, he said, mark my words. If you get circumcised, and by doing that, you're saying, no, I'm going back to the earning posture. I'm going back to the merit system. Then Christ, what he did, has no value. You're off. You're gone. Now you got to go obey all the law. None of us can do that. None of us want to go back to that, do we? Even though it's logical, because that's the way our world works. You do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad. You do better, you get better. And Paul's teaching the gospel. 
You do nothing but believe. Christ is the only door to salvation, our only way to heaven. So he says, if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. So you remember what the battle was. The Jewish teachers, Judaizers, Old Testament scholar types were coming to the Galatian Christians and saying, it's not so simple like just believe on the Lord. Repent of your sins and believe of the Lord Jesus. That's it. No. You, you guys, you got to be circumcised, all right? You didn't do it at the right time on the eighth day like like Abraham, uh, like Abraham, uh, all the descendants of Abraham were, were, were circumcised, the, the 12 disciples, Jesus, David, Solomon. But now you'll have to do it. Listen, this, is, this is, seems simple, but it's revolutionary. If you go that way, now you got to obey the whole law. Every law, every holiday, every one of the Ten Commandments, you got to obey it perfectly. You want to go that route? Go that route. But you'll have nothing to do with Christ. No one ever told me that growing up in church. No one read that passage to me. I warn you that if you do a thing God commanded in the Old Testament, did he not command circumcision? I warn you that if you go back and do what God commanded and try to earn now merit with God, you're cut off from Christ. Obey the whole law now. You ready? Come on every holy day. And listen, the whole 500 some commands in the Old Testament and no, no garments with mixed fabric. Yeah. And stone those kids that cursed their parents and put down that pork chop. What are you doing with that thing? You got to obey it all. Come on, if you're going to go that way, Paul's saying go the, all the way. Unless you drop the whole thing and say, my only hope, my only righteousness. Oh, my only salvation is in Jesus Christ. Let that be our testimony today. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.